economy. Your Excellency, President Mohamedou Buhari, I also call him a father as well. Your Excellency, the President-elect, Paula Ahmed Tinumbu, Your Excellency, the Vice President-elect, their brother, Excellency Chetima, Your Excellency, President Uhuru Kenyatta, he and I have known each other forever, former President of the Republic of Kenya, the Secretary of the Government of the Federation, but their brother, Boss Mustafa, and thank you for all you did to get me here. I finished the annual meetings of the African Development Bank, Mr. President, yesterday at about midnight, and I had to get on the flight to be here this morning. That's why I came in late here. Thank you very much, uh, Secretary. Excellencies, Governors, Your Eminence, Your Royal Highnesses, Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen, Friends of Nigeria, Beloved Nigerians. I wish to start by thanking you, Mr. President, for inviting me to the ceremonies for the swearing in of the incoming president, His Excellency Bola Ahmed Tinumbu. I would like to congratulate you, Mr. President, for this achievement of the seventh democratic transition of our beloved country. I would like to congratulate the incoming president and also the incoming vice president. I wish to thank the Secretary of the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, the Chairman and members of the Transition, Presidential Transition Council for inviting me to speak at this inaugural, inauguration lecture for the incoming President of Nigeria. It is such a great honor to share my views and perspectives after the wonderful speech that has been given by my very dear friend and brother, His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta, as our nation gets ready to have a passing of the baton between His Excellency President Mohamed Buhari and the incoming President, His Excellency Ashiwaju Ahmed Bola Tinumbu. It is your turn. <laughs> I wish to congratulate you, Mr. President, for your stewardship against difficulties of our nation for the past eight years. And thank you most sincerely, Mr. President, for your support for me as President of the African Development Bank. People say great things about what, by God's grace, we've been able to achieve. But unless I was sent on a mission and supported on that mission, it would not have been possible. I'd like to thank you, Mr. President, because without your support in 2015, and you're standing beside me and behind me in the rough times of 2020, I will not be President of the African Development Bank. Mr. President, I was brought up as a kid to always go back to their elders and thank them. And we always say that the person who sent you on an errand is the person you go back to to thank and give the report back to. And so I'll just say two things as I thank you because I will not have another opportunity to thank you. The African Development Bank, Mr. President, was ranked this year as the most transparent financial institution in the world. And last year, Your Excellency, Mr. President, the African Development Bank was ranked as the best multilateral financial institution in the world. And so as you take leave as President, please accept my deepest gratitude, because without your support, I wouldn't have been there. And I want to thank you so much that you can take pride in these achievements as you go. And my dear brother, Bishop Kuka, was talking about Nigeria. I am proudly Nigerian. I will live as a Nigerian. I'll die as a Nigerian. And I'll ask God for permission on Resurrection Day if I might just hold a green, white, green flag in my hand, and that would be great. I would like to congratulate the incoming president, His Excellency Bola Ahmed Tinumbu, GCFR, who will take over the mantle of leadership from Nigeria, from you. I'm delighted that my very dear friend, President Uhuru Kenyatta, the former president of Kenya was invited to deliver the inauguration lecture. He is a great leader, not only in Kenya, 
a great leader for Africa. And I'm sure you must be wondering, there are actually two Kenyans that are actually here on this panel. Well, I lived in Kenya for many, many years, 10 years in Kenya. And I remember one day, President Goodluck Jonathan took me on a mission to Kenya, and we went to see President Uru Kenyatta. And as the two presidents were introducing members of their delegations, President Jonathan said to President Uru Kenyatta, here is Dr. Adeshina, Minister of Agriculture, to which President Kenyatta responded, yes, Adeshina is the Kenyan on loan to Nigeria. We all laughed. Thank you, Mr. President Kenyatta, for what an incredibly powerful speech you gave us to us today. Very, very insightful. Your Excellencies, the election of a new president always elicits hope. Nigeria will be looking to you as President Chinumbu and Vice President Shetima on your first day in office with hope. Hope that you will assure security, peace, and stability. Hope that you will heal and unite a fractious nation. Hope that you will rise above party lines and forge a compelling force to move the nation forward with inclusiveness, fairness, equity, and justice. Hope that you will dramatically improve the economy, which is what I'm going to talk about today. And hope that you will spark a new wave of prosperity. And hope must be brought to the present, as hope defined makes the heart grow weary. Your Excellencies, the starting point must be macroeconomic and fiscal stability. Unless the economy is revived and the fiscal challenges addressed boldly, the resources to develop will not be there. No bird can fly if its wings are tied. Nigeria currently faces huge fiscal deficits, estimated at 6% of the GDP. This has been due to several challenges, including low receipts to dwindling revenues from export of crude oil, vandalism of pipelines, and illegal bunkering of crude oil. According to Nigeria's Debt Management Office, Nigeria now spends 96% of its revenue servicing debt. With the debt-to-revenue ratio rising, from 83.2% in 2021 to 96.3% by 2022. Some will argue that the debt to GDP ratio at 34% is still low compared to other countries in Africa. And that is absolutely correct. For no one pays their debt using GDP. Debt is paid using revenue, and Nigeria's revenues have been declining. Nigeria earns revenue today to service debt and not to grow. The place to start, therefore, is to remove the inefficient fuel subsidies. Nigerian fuel subsidies benefit the rich, not the poor. Fueling theirs and government's endless fleet of cars at the expense of the poor. Estimates show that the poorest 40% of the population consume just 3% of petrol. Fuel subsidies are killing the Nigerian economy, costing the economy of Nigeria $10 billion alone in 2022. And that means that Nigeria is borrowing what it doesn't have to borrow for. If it simply eliminates these inefficient subsidies and uses the resources well for national development. Rather, Support should be provided to private sector refineries and modular refineries to allow for efficiency and competitiveness to drive down fuel pump prices. The newly commissioned Dangote refinery, by Your Excellency, Mr. President, the largest single train petroleum refinery in the world, as well as the petrochemical complex, will revolutionize Nigeria's economy. And congratulations to you, Mr. President.